Yeah, are you surprised at how they're dominating the Raptors to this extent? Uh, I, I am actually surprised a little bit at how much they have dominated this series. The Raptors look completely outmatched. Mm -hmm. uh, Philly's more physical than them. They've got more size than them. Going into this series, I thought this was going to be one of the most fascinating first-round series. You've got Pascal Siakam, who probably will be on an all-NBA team this year. Fred Van Vliet, who's a fringe all-NBA player this year, will get some votes for that third team. Made the All-Star game. You've got Nick Nurse, a championship head coach with a great pedigree, who's great at making adjustments. I didn't see any adjustment between <laughs> game one and game two. The adjustment I saw was, we're going to be super physical in the first 10 minutes of the game, and we're going to be more aggressive trying to get to the basket and create pass and kick opportunities. In terms of how they're guarding Philly, though, it's a bunch of guys in gaps against James Harden and a bunch of guys in a dig position against Joel Embiid. Those guys are going to put up numbers, but what that has allowed the Sixers to do is just make target practice passes for target practice shots. The amount of set threes that Philly shooters are getting in this series is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. No one within five feet of them. And so that's the adjustment you're going to have to make. We're going to have to you're going to have to pick a poison. You're going to have to be willing to die with that poison. And right now, they're just giving up too much. And we, you brought up Tyrese Maxey. He has emerged in this season, but it's specifically in these first two games, as a legitimate star. He's a phenomenal basketball player and fun to watch. And he does a little bit of everything. Half court, full court, in transition. Um, love watching him score the basketball. I like Maxey a lot. <clears throat> I really, really do. But he's averaging 30 <laughs> in this series. Let's pump the brakes. Mm -hmm. This is more about what the Toronto Raptors are not, more so than what the Toronto Raptors are, because I think all of us know that Tyrese, you know, Tyrese Maxey is not going to average 30, okay? Not when you talk about as we venture deeper, deeper into the playoffs against different competition. What we're looking at in the Toronto Raptors squad is a team that's relatively depleted, but more importantly, Absol one that's absolutely petrified by Joel Embiid. They, they, you know, they preoccupy themselves with everything he's doing. You got the coach complaining about fouls at every single turn. And as a result, Maxi and Tobias Harris have been able to get off somewhat. And as a result, we haven't required but so much from James Harden, particularly in game two. So we shall see. In the end, I am somewhat surprised because I think that when you look at Siakam and Van Vliet and others, this is a team that's got some championship pedigree. I certainly expected them to shoot better from three-point range that they have thus far in this year. I think they shot like 12 or 30 in the first game, 11 or 30 in the first game, and like 12 or 32 in the second game. Uh, they, You just look at them right now. They just seem a bit disoriented, a bit overwhelmed. I did not expect that. I expected the Sixers to win this series, but I didn't expect them, uh, the Raptors, to look completely overwhelmed. But that's a testament to the greatness of Joel Embiid the impact that he has had, and just as equally, to some degree at least, to the point that the Toronto Raptors are just not what they used to be. They're building something. I give Masai Ujiri credit. They're not a part of the championship equation this year. We all know that. But at least they didn't stink like some teams did in L.A. and New York, to be specific, this season. At least they didn't do that to the country of Canada, okay? At least they didn't do that. I was surprised how dominant they were in game one. Game two, to a lesser degree, I mean, Gary Trent Jr. couldn't play. He didn't feel well. Scotty Barnes, who finalist for Rookie of the Year, unavailable. And they just can't match up with the Sixers flat out. I also think when you look at momentum baskets in that game, even when they cut it to 11, you know, Maxi hits a three. Danny Green is out dunking like we reversed the clock three years ago. Um, James Harden is jumping into passing lanes and getting steals in the backcourt. Like, what is happening? And I just think Tyrese Maxey has been so fun and so energizing for the entire Sixers roster on both sides of the basketball. I actually was watching last night like, wow, Look at how they're moving defensively, how connected they are, how they were closing gaps compared to what the Raptors left on the table. And so, um, again, same thing for me in the conversation with the Warriors Nuggets series. This, at this point, this has now become a bad matchup, but credit to the Sixers for taking care of business and leaving no doubt because there was a time in the regular season where this might not have been as convincing a performance and so I, they've handled business. 
I'd be remiss in neglecting to bring up the fact that things could potentially be a slight bit different in, t in Canada. I mean, after all, Mr. Thibault, who forgot that you're supposed to take two shots of the vaccine and ended up only taking one, is ineligible to play against the Toronto Raptors because those games are in Canada. Who knows whether or not that's going to affect their bench it's not. It's not. He only played 10 minutes last it's night, not. I think. It's not. It's, yeah. I understand to Mon that. To Mon to Monica's Road point, games are different. To Monica's point, you know, I, I, I said Max, he's a star. And, and what I mean by that, do I mean he's reached the level of a Steph Curry or a Giannis or someone <laughs> like? No. But there are stars, and there's stars yeah. in your role. Star and moment, what he's yeah. doing is starring in that role. He is maximizing that role. I do. As that second or third option offensively. Mm -hmm. Monica brought up that three he made. They oh, cut mm -hmm. it to 11. Costly turnover. He comes down. Stones pull up three in transition. There's a joy and a Absolutely. confidence. Yeah. And Absolutely. I really believe this. Even as a young player, Philly is feeding off of that joy, mm -hmm. that energy, that confidence. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.